Hello everyone, this is Caroline Jones from Useful Graphic Design Tutorials and welcome to our live training called What You Need to Know to Attract More Visitors to Your Website and Keep Them There, also known as How to Optimize Your Images for Speed and Search. Now Davina is actually looking after the chat function so please do put your questions in there so that um, we can answer them and, and maybe we'll get her to come in um, at the end. So for those of you who don't know who we are and hopefully there will be some people on the call who that is the case, we are Caroline Jones and Davina Braun and I'm Caroline on the left and Davina's on the right and we're sisters and yes Davina is the eldest. Davina's a retired social worker and I'm um, an ex-hotelier and we've been online since around 2011 when we decided that we'd like to learn more about this marketing online thing. We're self-taught in graphics, various graphics software programs, um, there's pretty much lots of them, and pretty much everything else really online. So the first thing to say to you is this, you don't necessarily have to be artistic or technical to do this stuff. So, so don't worry about that. If you'd like to stay in touch with us after the training session, then do come over to our Facebook page and say hello, or on Twitter, or on G+, or on our website. Or indeed, if you've got any follow-up questions from the training, come and ask us. We personally monitor the page on Facebook and all the other social media platforms. Now, before we get going, I'm just going to do a very quick straw poll, if you can put your answers in the chat box to this question. Do you add your own images to your website? Yes or no? Quick question there. Okay, yes, the majority um, of people coming up saying yes, they do. Okay, leave that a little while for that to sort of complete. And the next question, the second question is, if you do add your own images to your website, do you optimize those images? Quick yes or no? Okay, so... Um, that's okay that's pretty conclusive really most people don't optimize the images so that's quite good because that's what you're going to learn to do tonight please do share this live training um, on uh, any of your social media uh, platforms uh, we would love it if you would share it and here is the link it's usefulgraphicdesigntutorials.com slash offers slash web 102 they can log into their webinar now or they can get a, a replay within the next 24 hours uh, which we will be sending out obviously after this training and we do want to say hi to any of you fantastic Australians who are on the call any any here well, it, it, I mean, it's really early in Australia, so hello to those of you who are on the replay. We promise we do plan to do two times in future training where the timing will be more civilised in your neck of the woods. So do hold us to that. Now, we've got a secret prize with a bit of a twist on this training. And um, what we suggest is, or what we encourage you to do, is to go over to our Facebook page and here's the link on the screen now, facebook.com slash useful graphic design tutorials. Go over to our page, you'll see pinned at the top of the post uh, an image which is pretty obvious and what I would ask you to do is to share the post and then comment uh, with your fan page URL as yourself or as your business, it really doesn't matter. And then we'll tell you a little bit more about the draw later on. So let's get going on what you need to know to attract visitors to your website and keep them there. And our goal in this session is to show you how to optimize your images for speeding up the time it takes to load your web pages and optimize your images to be found on Google search. And we aim to spend just 30 minutes covering this training. We appreciate that you're busy and we want the information to be short and to the point. So, you know, I'm going to be you know, going at, at a pretty nifty whack, as it were. Um, it also, this, this whole thing involves a few concepts that confuse people. So we thought we'd choose this as our second training session. 
we do want to focus on uh, the, the bite-sized topics so that hopefully you'll be able to feel that you can use the information or at least some part of the information without getting too bogged down with uh, that sort of the overwhelm and as I said initially, if you've got any questions as we go along, do put them in the chat box and Davina will gather them up and we can reply to them at the end. It is customary on free training videos such as this to be sponsored by a relevant product. And this is the case here. And we plan to spend the last 10 minutes talking about this and then we'll go into the Q&A session. So that's really the format for the next 30 minutes. So what are the benefits? of optimizing your images. Why would you want to do this? Well, visitors are more likely to stay around on your website um, if pages load faster. More page views equals more sales. And actually optimizing your images can reduce the pace page load by up to 80%. And Google takes into account the speed at which someone can view the content on your web page when ranking the pages. Also, there's a good chance of getting more traffic to your site. Original images are best as they offer more value. And uh, images will show up on search results page equals more exposure equals more traffic. If you want to test the current load time of any page, here's a good site to do that with, and it's tools.pingdom. Pingdom. Sorry, that's it's like kingdom, isn't it? Pingdom. <laughs> tools.pingdom.com. And you can have a little try of that. Okay, let's just have another check. Can everybody still hear me and see the screen, see the slides? Okay, yes, you can. Good. Excellent. So, first of all, what is image optimization? Image optimization is using the smallest image file size while still being of a visually acceptable quality in the proper file format. And image optimization is essential for a website, particularly if images play a significant role in the site itself. And the one extreme of that is something like an e-commerce site where you're, you're actually showcasing the uh, products in images. But why is optimization needed? Well, there's two main reasons, really. As I mentioned before, how quickly a web page loads for a visitor to your website and the bandwidth used. How quickly a visitor has to wait for a page to load is important. If your web page doesn't load quickly, and we're talking here about loading in seven seconds maximum, then the chances are that you'll lose that visitor as they'll move on to the next site. Zoom. Vamos. They've gone. Don't believe me? Want more proof? Well, Amazon calculated that a page, one page slowdown of just one second could cost them 1.6 billion in sales each year. This data comes from an infographic compiled by OnlineGraduatePrograms.com and the specific goal of finding out about the tolerance of slow web page speeds for the average US web user. They then extended the data to cover other habits that take time like waiting in line or being served in a restaurant. And some of the statistics revealed by the study are, to be honest, quite mind-boggling in their demonstration of impatience. For example, one in four people abandon surfing to a website if its pages take longer than four seconds to load. Okay, so that's just four. Mississippis, 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 Mississippis. And four in ten Americans give up accessing a mobile shopping site that won't load in just three seconds, which is roughly the time to read the end of this last sentence. I mean, that's mind-boggling. Also, Google has calculated that by slowing its search results by just four-tenths of a second, they could lose eight million searches per day, meaning they'd serve up many million fewer online adverts, which means they'd make less money through advertising. You may have a turbocharged internet connection, but some of us live in a field and are right at the end of the broadband line, miles from the exchange, and our broadband is quite slow. So every little helps. And the second thing is the amount of bandwidth use. Now this is the amount of data being transferred between 
the web host, that is your server, in our case this is HostGator, to your computer. Now don't go all sort of glazed eye on me, this is, this, I'm, I'm making this hopefully quite straightforward. So let's say you have three images on your home page and each one is two megabytes in size, which is quite large. Each time someone views your home page, they're actually using six megabytes of the bandwidth. That's three images by two megabytes. If you have a hundred visitors, they'll be using 600 megabytes just by viewing the home page. Now, if you need more bandwidth, you've got two options. You can buy more or you can use less. And this is where optimizing your images comes in. Now, don't go rushing off immediately. We finish the training here to work out how much bandwidth you are using or not using. We've got unlimited bandwidth with HostGator and you're possibly or very probably in the same position. However, it's still smart to optimize your images so that your web pages do load faster. And uh, if anyone was on our last training, Forbes magazine is predicting that visual content will increasingly become a critical piece of any solid content strategy in 2014. So, you know, this isn't going to go away. So how do you optimize the image size? Well, there are three things to take into account. Optimizing the image size, optimizing the file size, and using the right file format. I skipped over a, a slide there, I do apologize. So optimizing the image size, the physical size of your images can take up a lot of page and eventually affect the loading time of that page and images are measured in pixels and whilst the width of your web page will vary a good yardstick size for a landscape image is 600 pixels by 250 pixels in height now I'm, I'm generalizing here but I'm trying to give you some sort of benchmark to hold on to okay and this is an example of what that looks like this is um, that sized image on our website and you can see here it takes it pretty much up to the sidebar which is over here on the right hand side. Now for a portrait style image a good size is 300 pixels wide uh, by 500 pixels in height. Again, you know, it's just a, a general uh, size to give you something to hold on to. And here's an example of what uh, that looks like. For all, any of you who are not sure what a pixel looks like, well, here's a picture of a beautiful pink hydrangea. And if we zoom in really, really, really close, we begin to see how this is made up. It's made up of little squares of colour known as pixels, which are, by the way, short for pixel. Pi blah, 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 excuse me, put my teeth in. Short for picture elements. So the second element to be aware of when you're optimizing images is the file size of the image. Now this is the digital size of the image measured in kilobytes and megabytes. And to find out what the size of the image is, just right click on the image if you're on a PC. For a Mac, press Control and click and you're presented with this window. Oops, after you've selected the properties. That's important to say that. So you right click, select properties and this window pops up. And this clearly shows you the image file size. And you can see here in the red arrow it's 3.46 megabytes, which is huge. And if you put images on your site this size, then your visitors are going to be waiting for, well, they're not going to be waiting forever, they're going to go vamoose, they're, they're not going to hang around. It is possible to reduce the size of these JPEG images by compressing them while still maintaining the image quality. And there are several free tools around to do this. And here's some of them. Uh, this first one, jpegmini.com or tinypng.org. Those are both good at uh, compressing. And if you've got Photoshop or GIMP, then this facility comes within the software and it's within the save for web option, which is pretty good, really. So here we go. 
I've done this uh, little exercise here. On the left, we've got an image which is 300 kilobytes in size, and I've compressed it, actually using Photoshop, to 20 kilobytes. I mean, can you tell the difference? I, I, I can't, and I'm, I mean, it's, it's right in front of me. So, you know, that's a really good way to compress the size. So just to recap here, images which are between 400 to 600 pixels wide and 250 uh, pixels in height aim to have a file size of between 60 to 100 kilobytes as a yardstick. And images um, with a height, sorry, uh, and, a, and a width of 250 pixels aim to have a size between 40 to 80 kilobytes but to be honest the smaller the better without compromising quality so you know have a little play around yourself but you won't go far wrong if that's what you aim for there and the th third key element um, is uh, is looking at the image file format or type having the correct one and here are the three most common file formats, JPEG, but also known as JPG, or JPEG, I'm not quite sure how you say that second one, but you know what I mean, a PNG format or a GIF format. JPEG is best for photos, the size is compressed and the quality is good. The PNG has great quality, the si but the size is larger as the photo isn't compressed. And GIF, the quality of the image is not so good as with a PNG, so it's not used very much these days, to be honest. Now, if you, if you need a transparent background, that is to say it's not white or coloured, then you will need to use the PNG format. And as I've just mentioned, it is larger than the JPEG, um, so you know a good idea is to actually compress it. And you can use a piece of software to do this. Two examples are tinypng.org, punypng.com. And by the way, for those on the replay, we will be sending out the links in the replay as well, if you haven't got them. Uh, and Davina's currently putting these into the chat function uh, so people on the call can actually get them. Um, for anyone who's got Photoshop, then you can use exactly the same procedure as before, uh, save for web. And let me show you what I mean on this. Okay, so here we have a, a wee doggy uh, with a background, which is snow. I've removed the, the background and saved as a PNG format, so the dog is sitting on a transparent background. Now I've used the tiny PNG service to compress the PNG. And um, the one on the top has a file size of 1.58 megabytes, and the one on the bottom has a file size of 524 kilobytes. Again, can you see the difference in these? Because because I can't really. And and actually, 524 is still quite big. But I just wanted to you know um, share the the point here, and um, how good the compression uh, service is on a PNG photo. OK, so let's recap here. Um, the three elements that you need to look out for when you're optimising images to choose the best image size, the best file size and the appropriate file format. OK, let's just take a breather here. want to just check to find out whether or not this is helpful, is it useful and is it giving you some ideas? And also, can you still hear me? And can you see the, the screen? OK, we're getting affirmatives. We're getting affirmatives to that, so that's good. We'll crack on to the last part here. Oh, and by the way, almost all of the images that I've used here have come from pixabay.com. So now we're going to have a look at optimising images for search. You may not know this, but images can generate a fair bit of traffic from image-based search engines such as Google. And if you want some of this traffic to find its way to your website, then you need to know how to optimise for the search engines. And we're going to look at the three key elements, which are naming images correctly, using the alt alternative text, and using image descriptions. 
Now, the first key is to naming, naming your images correctly using plain English. Creating descriptive keyword rich file names is really important for image optimization, and the more specific you are, the better. Search engines, in fact, not only crawl the text on your web page, but they search for keywords within the file, uh, sorry, the image file names too. Here's what you need to avoid. And we've all done this. The top one actually came straight from my camera, um, you know, and I downloaded it. The next one I made up, but I'm making a point here. If a search engine crawls this, it's, it's going to have no idea what's actually on the image. So here's a better way of doing it. Here's a picture of a duck saying you've got mail. You could name the image duck. However, it would be better, and to be more specific, to call it something like mullard duck telling you you've got mail. I mean, look, it's a silly example. But just think, um, there may also be people searching for things like funny jokes with mullard ducks. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I'm beginning to regret using this example, but hopefully you get my point. The second element to take into account is using the alt or alternative text option. When you see a baby crying in a photo, it's obvious what's happening. However, search engines can only read text, so the same image won't be recognisable by them. So to help them, we need to describe the image itself using text, and this is actually what alternative text is. Also, if an image doesn't load for some reason, or the images are turned off, that the text would appear in that place, and that's why it needs to be descriptive. Adding alt text to your image can help your website achieve better rankings in the search engines by associating the keywords with the image. And you can see in this particular uh, screenshot there's the alternative text, one bedroom apartment in the centre of Timbuktu. Very desirable by the looks of it. And the third element is using descriptive words, including keywords. And let's say you were trying to sell a lovely cottage in Wallingford, Surrey, England, and you name your photo photo1.jpg. And you don't use alt text at all you're very likely to miss out on potential viewings of the ad. However, if you name your image typical English cottage in wallingford.jpg and write two bedroom English cottage in the centre of Wallingford for the alt text, your photo is likely to be indexed by Google and those keywords would show in the results. And by the way, the keywords used here would be English cottage. But you've also put in the location which is Wallingford. So that's really going to help. So what about images on social media? Well you don't really have to optimize um, for speed for loading because the social media platform will do this and um, you probably sort of experienced um, some of this as well of the compression that's used. For example if you use a I think it's red or pink image on Facebook then the, the, the image is compressed so much that it looks a bit fuzzy. But for search on social media, uh, I would always suggest um, using relevant keywords, certainly for Pinterest and Google+. Twitter, um, possibly not so much, and Facebook, well, yes, on your Facebook page, because it is indexed by Google. And what about images on the website that aren't optimised? Let's say, for example, you know, you, 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 you say, well, that's great, but, you know, I didn't know this when I started out blogging. How do I, you know, how do I, what do I do with that? Well, I would certainly go back and optimise those images, but prioritise them by looking at the most popular posts first and those that drive the most traffic. Optimise them first and then come back and do the rest. Okay, so... Has this given you some thoughts? Um, is it something you can use? Give me a little bit of feedback in the in the chat function there, um, because hopefully it is something that you can you can go and use and do you know um, in the future. Getting lots of sort of affirmatives there. Yes, lots of things that I didn't know, 
Um, yes, really useful to have the sort of benchmark on the sizes. Okay, great. Well, that that's that's really good to know. So it's an amazing time really to get around making your own images. A picture paints a thousand words, said Frederick Barnard in 1921. Well, these days it's more like a picture paints a thousand shares. And we said at the start that the free training was sponsored by a product, and we'd like to spend the last 10 minutes just telling you about this training product. It's called DIY Marketing Graphics and Photos. Fast Easy Graphics for websites, blogs, and social media. And it's a step-by-step -step video training program, including all the tools and know-how that you, the small business owner, need to make images you'd be proud to call your own. Um, and yes, I'm sure you'd be surprised if we didn't share an offer with you. So stay tuned for this, because the offer is only available for a limited time. And you'll also want to know about our draw. For those of you who know us, we've had a fair bit of feedback over the months asking for certain things. I mean, you may be even one of them. Things including how to make images that look professional, that generate engagement and action. Software that's easy to use, that doesn't require a steep learning curve. So that, you know, if you don't use the software for a while, it's still easy to come back to without having to learn it all over again. I don't know if some of you can relate to that. It happens to us frequently. Clear instructional videos, videos that can be found all in one place, saving time in trying to find the good, the right ones on YouTube, and so on and so forth. So we took all these comments um, into account, put it into the melting pot, and we've come up with the video training using the free software iPicky. And we've used actually iPicky to embellish the photos in this presentation. And in this training, we show you how to do everything from start to finish, including creating your own images to help your business stand out, and that's an important thing, to create original images. How to edit and size photos easily. How to protect your images to avoid them being pinched. How to optimize images to speed up web page loading and help them get found in the search engines. And we expand on that a little bit, a little bit what we've been talking about tonight. How to upload your images and photos to social media sites such as YouTube, Google+, Facebook, etc. And here are a couple of examples of the images we've created from scratch using iPicky to give you a bit of a flavour. And this is quite a nice um, image um, which is relatively easy to make but you know there's lots of little elements that we show you how to do to enhance that. And here's the second one. Uh, this is actually for, well, it could be for a Google Plus header, could be for a Facebook header, for a Facebook group, whatever. And again, we show you how to take some of the very basics elements and sort of add to that as well. So you've got everything really in one place to learn how to create images that can turn prospects into the customers. And who's the training for? Well, it's for small business owners who need social media graphics, advertising materials, web headers, virtual assistants who want to add graphic service to their business offering, social media managers who need graphics every day for their clients, or hobbyists. And what's included? Well, there are 21 easy to follow videos with clear, well-paced instructions on how to make images for Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, blogs, YouTube and Google+. We take all of the social media, the main social media platforms. We show you how to upload your images for these platforms, plus how to upload an app image to a Facebook page and Word uh, images to WordPress blogs. We've also included a video guide where we pull out the key action points for each video to make it easier and quicker for you to find a crucial learning point. We've included all the images that we use in the videos, no strings attached because it's much much easier to work with something that you're being shown how to do. We've popped in five top tips on taking your own photos, a quick checklist to help you on your way because there's no doubt about it, taking your own photos is the cheapest and least hassle way to create content because you don't have to worry about 
uh, licenses or copyright. There's an essential resources report and we share with you the free or low cost tools that are available online and help you embellish your images. And here's an example of an image that you can create, which I know, you know has been commented on quite a lot actually on um, our Facebook page. We've got comprehensive details um, of all the current social media sizes, again all in one place. And this is all wrapped up in a private Facebook group where you can share your masterpieces, get help and advice and share results. And um, we've been running this program um, for the last five weeks I think it is and one of the most powerful aspects of this training that we've been told by our current members is the support given. There's a thriving, thriving community where people spark off each other, inspire each other, help each other and we are there to guide and help when needed. So there's plenty of hands-on support uh, from the both of us and just I mean there's been lots of really nice um, feedback actually from um, this group and just here's a couple the best group I've had the privilege to join I'm truly blown away by the fact that you try answer posts every day and that's actually really important to us because we've been in the situation where we've created started to create something or started to do something maybe a video and we got stuck halfway through and we've had to wait well some considerable time to find an answer so that sort of thing is actually really important to us We've also included four bonuses, how to take a screenshot and why they're so useful, how to make a five minute video for no cost and again why your customers will love you for doing this and that's been interesting with current people, they've really grasped this and begun to realise the power of doing a screenshot or a video. A guide to optimising your images for search engines um, plus how to upload your images to a WordPress blog and how to position them on the page which is sometimes a tricky little manoeuvre. So what's the investment for this training? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> There's a one-off members price for this evening of $87 and it will be held for four days expiring on Sunday the, 8th, the 17th of October. I beg your pardon. All the information will be available immediately, so you can go at your own pace, and the charges are one-off payment, there is no ongoing subscription. So let's just put that into perspective for a moment. $87 compared to what? How many video, uh, YouTube videos would you have to search for to find the ones you want to be able to see and clearly uh, understand what's being said? what sort of pro uh, you know how much time would it take to do that let's say you're outsourcing um, or thinking about outsourcing um, some of the graphics work to Fiverr for eighty seven dollars you'd get seventeen images done what then what happens each time you want to change a Google Plus photo or an image on a sales page or create a Facebook ad make a registration you know the list goes on if you actually know how to make them yourself, then you know you're in complete control of that situation. Also, what price do you put on having hands-on support? Or you could look at it another way. You could earn back the cost of the training with just one client who needs a few graphics over the course of a year. Say you charge between 25 to, I don't know, $100 per graphic, you'll quickly earn back the cost of the course and make some money at the same time. We've created a number of images for the promotion of the product. Crucial images for sales page, testimonials, images, product images, guarantees, event images, presentation slides, and yes, look, we're in the business of doing this, so you'd expect us to do that. But what about Forbes's prediction for 2014? Visual content will increasingly become a critical piece of any solid content strategy. You've only got to look at um, sites like SlideShare, Pinterest, Mobley Path, etc. We're confident that you're going to love the training and be part of our community. Which is, to be honest, um, the current members are an absolute delightful group. 
but we're confident um, you're going to in, in, in love the training and we're backing it with a 30 day money back guarantee. Just buy the one-off membership, try it for 30 days and if you decide it's not for you then email us and we'll send you a refund. No questions asked. Okay, so here is the URL of the sales page. It's usefulgraphicdesigntutorials.com slash offers slash DIY dash marketing dash graphics and Davina is going to put that in the chat now and let's just tell you what we're going to do with the draw this time what we're going to do is we're going to put all of the names of the people who purchase the training during the offer period and then we're going to pull a name out of the hat at random and then we're going to refund the cost of the training so that one person is going to get this training free. And the reason we're doing this is that we want to do it for someone who really has an interest in the program. So with that, um, I think we'll then go on to some questions. Okay, so uh, let's have a look here. <coughs> Oh, here's a good question um, from Elaine. How long do you get access for to the training? Well, to be precise, Elaine, you get 999 years, which I don't know about you, is certainly in my lifetime. So it's really unlimited. You can pop in there um, as and when to access any part of uh, the training that you want. But it's a great question. <clears throat> Um, you, somebody mentioned something about not using GIF images. Yeah, I mean, that is a that is an interesting question, and I would put that explanation on the slide. But I suppose the truth is that um, so many people these days use a PNG image as opposed to GIF, although I know there are people who do use GIF um, as well. Okay. Um, Here's a question from John here. Do you have an affiliate program for the product? Uh, yes, we do actually, uh, John. And um, we'll just put the affiliate link uh, into the chat box there. And for those of you on the replay, we will include that as well because you may have an, you may have an interest in affiliating with it, which would be fantastic. Okay, um, how are we doing for time? Yes, we better crack on. Um, I think probably the last question, and we will we will actually address all of the questions because you know we've got a, a log of them. But what does the support comprise of? I mean, that's really an interesting question. Um, I'd love to get one of the members on here to actually talk from their perspective. And, and to be honest, if you've got any questions about that, um, email us because um, I'd be very happy if our members are okay with this you know for you to talk to them direct but but in essence you know any questions that you have that you email to us you know we're going to answer within 24 hours but the thing is um, and I know that not everybody is actually going to um, frequent Facebook as much as um, others but it's a very visual thing and trying to explain something you know sort of in the concept as opposed to showing them um, is a little bit more tricky so that's why the Facebook group is actually quite handy because you can you can show somebody what you've done and then ask for some feedback so support in that respect also um, I suppose critiquing um, feedback of what could be done better um, ideas and inspiration because you know when there's a whole group of people what one person sees in a photo or in an image, somebody else will see something completely different. So it's merging of all those sort of thoughts and ideas, which is really helpful as well. And also, I think one of the things that um, has come out so far, one of the biggest things, is actually giving people the confidence to, you know, express, um, well, certainly some of the questions and, and to ask for feedback. So. I mean, it's really quite a special group. Um, I, I, you know, we both really, really enjoy, you know, working in there and trying to help people out 
uh, as much as, as possible. But as I say, if you've got any questions about that and you'd like to speak to a member direct, email us. And if they're in agreement, then, you know, you can talk to them. OK, um, time's going on and it's, um, we said 45 minutes. Thank you very much indeed for your time, everybody. I hope that you've um, got something out of the training here. And um, I think that for tonight, we'll call it a night. So it's goodbye from Caroline Jones and Davina Braun of Useful Graphic Design Tutorials. Until next time.